Have you considered just an unranked diamond ankle? I, not really. I usually find those like really boring. I'll be honest. I usually find those like incredibly boring. I don't know if that's just me, but like, oh my god, this high elo player was able to smash people through bronze and silver and gold. <laughs> it's like I'm baffled. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I just, I just always, I found them not, not necessarily lazy content, but I personally don't enjoy those. Uh, the issue with a lot of smurfing though, is that a lot of these players, okay, so I'm going to fill you guys in on a secret here. Are you guys ready for this secret? There's a secret to smurfing. Are you ready for it? You're not ready for it, but are you ready for it? One of the biggest secrets to smurfing is that I promise you almost every single content creator or streamer of any sort you've seen smurfing and they'll do these things like really good wave manipulation or some sort of setup recall or a roam of sorts. All these things you can explain them fundamentally, yes. And any player can apply them, yes. But when players are smurfing like this, it works so effectively, not only because they've got the fundamentals down, but because they're really fucking good. <laughs> because they are very talented players. <laughs> That's why it works. Like, it's not because they have this knowledge that they can impart on people. It's because they're really good. <laughs> And a lot of people just completely discredit that. Like, a lot of people completely discredit that. Because they're like, oh, they're, they're telling me all this awesome stuff. And I can, I can learn this. I know how to freeze my lane. I know how to slow push my lane, lead it into a dive by communicating with my jungler to force him to miss an entire huge wave. Things like this. But first of all... How do I get to this point? Like, how do I outlane my opponent to get to this point? By being good. You can teach someone how to trade. And you can teach someone how to properly trade. But... <laughs> like, you can, you can only verbalize so much of the game, right? Like, you can only verbalize so much of the game. Especially when you're smurfing. Because I know when I'm smurfing, I don't sit here and think to myself... Like, I, I don't even sit here and actively think to myself what I'm doing to play the game. Like, it just, I just watch someone play, and to me, it's like, I I see, like, every step you're taking is a mistake in this lane right now, right? Like, <laughs> I was playing, um, what was it? I was playing Darius versus Renekton. Here, hold on. I'll just, I'll grab the game real fast. I was playing, I think it was on this account. See, Silver won, though. No, it was on this account. This <laughs> This game was fucking hilarious, by the way. I'll, okay, so story time with Ankle Spangin. I'll openly admit, if someone's a gigantic fucking dick nugget, I almost called him a dick nozzle, but I wanted to say dick nugget. But I'll openly admit, if someone's a dick nugget, my level of care for the game that I'm currently in goes from normal to I would literally turn off my computer to plug in my phone. So, you know, sometimes it do be like that. But that means I probably played this game on poo-poo hands. Did I? Yeah, I did. There it is. So, on this Darius game, um, this, this poor Renekton, this poor, poor Renekton, okay? It was... Yeah, I guess we can I guess we can just show you guys on this one. Because I I was not nice to this guy. I was not nice, okay? I was I was really really tired. I just wanted to play a really relaxing game. And I was not nice to this guy. So I'm pretty sure I'd actually already killed him like five times by the like seven minute mark or the 10 minute mark. So yeah, cause I can get this too real fast. 
And e I mean, everybody in this game just massacred everywhere. Like, here's a screenshot from this game that I sent to my friend that I was talking to while I was playing. Like, th this poor Renekton. The, the poor guy. <laughs> he was having no fun versus me. But, um... So first of all, his first mistake... You guys will see the first mistake. Uh, g give it, what? 20 seconds. Because I think I've already I think I've already gotten my first kill like 20 20 seconds from now uh, after the leash because for whatever reason Renekton's like you know what guys I'm Renekton and there's literally no possible way I could lose a 1v1 to a Darius right well he runs back at me he like, you, you can't just explain this to people, right? And then he runs back at me. You, you, can, you can't... You can't explain that to people, right? Like, you, you can't explain that to people. But I know off of that, Renekton died. I get to push this out and back. Because he's running Ignite. So this pushes out. I go to base. Spend my money. That's that. So look at this. He's level one. He's missed pretty much every single minion in the first two waves. He's at two minions. Our Karthus jungle died to the red buff. I, I thought it was kind of funny as an expedited back. Yeah, sure, we can... Uh, what is this? Uh, where is it? Scoreboard. There we go. So, back onto Poo Poo Hands. He also had this genius idea of following what uh, what RTO does. And RTO does a very greedy Renekton build, where he starts with a longsword and an anal bead to go directly into the tie mat like ASAP. Which is fine. It's fine, right? Like, that's totally fine. But you have to understand what weaknesses come with that. <laughs> so, I'm level 3. I know I'm stronger than him just because I know I'm superior. And I know Darius is a better champion right now. All I need to watch out for in this specific lane matchup is this right here. But now that he's low, I know he doesn't have potions. I actually win from here if I just play it decently. Now, this is actually greedy, right? Like, this is actually really greedy on my end. There's no doubt about it. And I realize this, so what do I do? I step back. I step back, knowing that there's a big wave, Renekton can flash W me with the Fury, pop his PTA, ignite me, I'm going down. So we chill. Easy. This part, you can teach someone. You can teach someone that part. But you can't teach someone not to do this shit. You can't teach someone not to do that shit. Like, what do you... What do I say? <laughs> right? Like, how do, you, how do you teach that one to someone? Do you tell them, hey, if your Renekton literally runs under your tower and you're playing Darius, hook him under the tower. I don't feel like I needed to teach you guys. I don't, I don't feel like that needs to be taught. Once again, though, trying to push this because I want to back. Uh, Renekton has to deal with this wave instead of stopping me to back. And we get to come back into lane here. So I'm 2-0. I've got three times the CS. <laughs> Use CC to keep your enemies under the tower when possible. Yeah. So, like, this is, this is the kind of thing I mean, though, when people are smurfing, right? Like, more often than not, the reason that if you're actually trying to learn, uh, like if you're actually trying to learn from a game, you should watch the higher ELO games because generally people can actually explain what they're doing right a lot easier than you can explain what other people are doing wrong. Because in most of these cases, I don't feel like it's pretty hard to see that what this Renekton's doing is wrong, right? Like, I don't think that's too hard to see that what he's doing is wrong. But then, of course, you have to start thinking, do you know why it's wrong? 
Like, why is this wrong? Well, because he died because of it, ankle spanking. Duh. Well, that's one reason. But, <laughs> how wrong is it? That depends on what I'm doing right. Because if I don't do the right thing after he's done the wrong thing, suddenly his wrong thing isn't as bad. So it's, it's kind of an interesting talk to have. And on this one, I, you, you got to wonder what he was thinking there. You really got to wonder what he was thinking. Um, but once again, basic wave manipulation. I know Renekton's still dead, has no teleport. Shove this under. I can even get a turret play here. Yeah. So that's, this is what I was trying to say earlier, though. Because regardless of... Okay. So I'm going to say this, and it might be somewhat of an unpopular opinion. Regardless of what people... Or what ELO people are, right? Most people that play this game aren't stupid. Like, people just, they aren't stupid. People in general are not stupid. They just don't understand the game. And that's... There's a difference. Like, there's certainly a difference. There is definitely a huge difference between people being actually stupid and not understanding the game or not wanting to understand the game. <laughs> Which is why I've always... I've always tried to hesitate on going into why what people are doing is wrong because if they want to learn and see why what people are doing is wrong you can kind of just like open your eyes because like if, if we pause right here this is a pretty obvious situation on how Renekton's fucked right because I'm 4-0 as Darius I'm 4-0 as Darius. I have double his CS. I've got, what, a level on him? I may not have my ult or my ignite right now, but I would still destroy him 1v1. But think about this. He has literally no chance of fighting me, right? Literally no chance of fighting me. And I actually rushed Ninja Tabai in this lane. Do you see that? I rushed Ninja Tabai just to be a little more... Like, not one-shottable for him. But right now, his wave is slow-pushing towards my like my side of the lane. Because he's got a bigger wave than me. Why is it happening like that? Because after I bounced it off the tower, it was an even wave on his side of the map. And he has a Tiamat. So Tiamat, I'm sure you guys know what this item does, gives your auto attacks an AoE effect. That will naturally push the wave. In this situation as Renekton, that's a hard thing to say you want. <laughs> because if he's pushing the wave, I'll show you exactly what we do with this. Because I proceed to do it. Like, I actually proceed to do it. All I need to do is notice where I'm standing. I am literally in his minion wave, getting my minions as they're low. Because if he comes up to me, he has to, he has to do that. <laughs> Or else he's dead. So I just let this slowly push my way. Get the minions as they're getting very low. He's trying to get whatever he can. Which in this situation he's doing about the best thing he can. But at this point they basically need to 3 man me. Or play a perfect 1v2. Like, or a 2v1. Because if they don't play it perfectly I just get a double kill. Like I just straight up get a double kill. So, proceed to constantly deny him any minion I can, chill on it, relax on it, and wait for it to get into the position that I can actually fully freeze it, and just run him down, because what's he going to do right here? The further up I stand, the further out of experience range he is. Because if I can keep him out of the experience range, that's even better. And this is the part where Renekton gets mega fucked. So I tried to use my phage movement speed right there. Go up on him. He doesn't have his flash. Get the dunk. 
it's a free kill. And now look at this wave. This wave is primed and ready for the most perfect freeze. The most textbook freeze. So notice that I've started this freeze 9 minutes and 45 seconds into the game. There is one lane coming, or one minion wave coming into the lane right now. At this point, Renekton has already lost two waves. Okay? Renekton has lost two waves. So if you guys have ever wanted to see what freezing looks like when it's done perfectly, this is exactly what it does and how it looks. I'm very intentionally keeping his minion wave slightly bigger than mine. So my minion wave dies faster. But you have to keep in mind that your reinforcements will get to the wave faster because it's on your side of the map. So to offset that, you have a bigger wave on their side. Now, with the waves how they are, I still have the lane frozen in the exact same spot over a full minute later. Renekton has now missed three full waves. And this is going to continue to happen until I either decide that it's time to break the freeze. Because at this point, this was the first time seeing Renekton right here. This was the first time I saw Renekton on the map since he left the lane. So at this point, I don't know if he's sitting in this bush. I don't know if he's elsewhere. Or maybe I was just blind because this was like 5 in the morning. And I just didn't see him run over something. So he's trying to get other stuff here. And this is about the best thing he can do. But he's still fucked here. So I actually messed up the freeze very slightly there. But at that point, it doesn't matter because you can just kind of tank the wave for a second. And still here. <laughs> Still sitting right where we want it, but my team decided that they wanted me to try and get or, uh, get some work on this tower So I, was, I started sitting here thinking about it and I was like, yeah Yeah, sure we can go for that. So I Think I broke I break my own freeze and start pushing here in a second because right now It's still completely frozen because of that siege minion But then I break so that was perfectly frozen For over two minutes that means Renekton missed, let's see, a wave comes in every 30 seconds, and there was already two waves there, so Renekton missed six waves. <laughs> and this is exactly the time where I took the screenshot. 401, 112CS, 041, 34CS. And now you'll see exactly why Renekton doesn't come to this lane. I was about to say, as soon as you see the Renekton on the map, why not break the freeze and push it if you know he wasn't in lane? In this specific situation, I chose not to do that there, uh, partially because I wanted to see how well I could execute freezing in this game, because it was like it's been a while since I did that. But also because it's just pure denial. Like I know that he's too weak to realistically do anything to the rest of my team around the map, um, unless my teammates are just being really stupid. So it's just pure denial. But. I start back in there, cancel it because I realize Renekton is still dead, so I can push this wave out again and get it to bounce off of the tower, and then we can go back. <laughs> Satisfied with his hard-fought assist in bot lane, Renekton returns top with an 80 farm deficit and is defeated in single combat once more. He begins to worry. <laughs> Pretty much, because at this point, I mean, I'm fucking massive, right? Well, I've got near-perfect CS, I've got my entire Trinity Force, a BF Sword, Tabai, and I'm on a level 11 Darius. They basically have to send, like, the whole kitchen sink to take me down. I think I actually die here because I get really really over aggressive but I don't remember if this is one of my deaths what rank are you currently ankle d4 raw mechanical talent oh I forgot I hit him with the high cat there 
I forgot him with the ice cap. But see, this is what I this is what I was saying though. Like You can teach people concepts and you can teach people fundamentals and you can teach people you can teach people what things are supposed to look like and tell people what the result is supposed to be. But you can't teach someone practice. Like, you just simply cannot teach someone practice. That's just how it is. This is what I actually probably could have killed a lot more there had I um, ulted the Rengar and got my stacks up. Like, if I ulted the Rengar, got my stacks up, and then started going into the fight with a reset ult with all of my passive up, I probably could have killed two or two more. Maybe. But I also got exhausted in that fight. But the rest of this game is kind of just like me spiraling out of control, fucking around, building Spear of Shojin, and everybody on my team is just destroying people. So... I did want to show that, though, just because, like... I think it's a really good example of how much you can really tell someone before... Before it starts to just be experience and more just learning how to punish people.